Peace, family. We should be live right now. What's going on, family? What's going on? I'm with the brother once again, Rod Hayes. All right. Welcome back to the platform, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. Indeed, family. Um, make I want to make sure you can hear me before we get started. Shout out to the family in the building. We already almost at 200. A lot of y'all was waiting here. I appreciate it. I appreciate your patience. And um, make sure you hit the like button. That's real important when we live stream that you hit the like button. It helps other people discover the live stream. So I definitely uh, want all of y'all to hit the like button, whoever's in here. All right. I'm going to have a great show tonight. Before we get started, um, we get to a few commercials and then we're going to get started, family. All right. Yeah. First and foremost, I want to give thanks to my brother King Simon out there, one of the best numerologists in the world. Text him 347-496-1022. The brother also has a course on Udemy.com. If you are interested in an introductory course on numer numerology, you can hit that brother up right there on that website. Also, family, a lot of workshops happening over at blackmagicuniversity.com. Make sure you go over there and check them out. These are life-changing workshops. We got plenty of testimonials to prove it. And um, I advise all of you to get up on game over there at blackmagicuniversity.com. All right. So with that being said, let me make sure all of y'all okay in the chat. Helen Devon, Dana Kennedy, Papa Gun, Blockchain Monkeys. He's a regular. I, I see you all the time, Blockchain Monkeys. All right. Who else? Empress, Noble Royalty. I'm looking to see if I see some regulars. Barbara Saunders. Barbara is a regular. Shout out to Barbara for always tuning in. I recognize that name. Um, yeah, let's get started. My brother Rod Hayes, man, I appreciate you coming on again. Like I said, you out there, you lining, you you you, you typing your name on YouTube. You all over the place, man. They got you all over you. Do you do you have your own YouTube channel yet, or you you didn't create one? I never created one. I just told the people that was listening to me if they seen something they like that i said clip it out put it on youtube because I, I i have a channel but mm. you know you need so many before you can go live on there right and my, my computer that i would have been moving all my videos with went down so okay okay well it's all good you here right now so um, i'm glad you're here like i said to start out with my brother we just passed an important day i seen all the people in the spiritual community talk about it 2 22 um, I've heard, I had a sister recently, a queen, the Oracle, uh, sister Myra recently talk about this big mama energy. And I also hear you talking about it. So could you just elaborate from your perspective on what exactly is this big mama energy that's hitting the planet heavy at this time? Please, my brother. All right. So, um, in, in our ancient traditions, no matter which one of our organic cultures you go to, mm -hmm the we always been matriarchal yes okay and this matriarch energy that goes through the women mm. right it's the same energy of creation it's the energy that holds the information of every aspect of creation so from that energy we call that big mama energy prime creator energy right so we call her Big Mama based on in the uh, galactic star clock. So if you pull up the um, calendar from uh, the ceiling in the part of Diana Isis, I think it is, over in uh, in Egypt, you see a, uh, a star map which is a, has what they call zoo types on it. And the zoo type that controls it all from the center um, is what we call Big Mama or Ta'ert or Tawaret. But in the different cultures, she have a different name. But the energy is the same. So like when we see in our family, the matriarch in the family, we call her Big Mama. We call her Mud Deer, Nana. And she like pretty much is the glue that always hold family together. Even when they don't get along with each other, they don't give each other shit at her house. So that's the big mama energy we talking about. 
And as above, so below, it plays out in the human family the same way it play out on the stars. Indeed, indeed. Why do you think other cultures, or maybe they do, don't seem to have a big mama like the black community? Like the black community is big on big mama. Is that, do you see that? Believe it or not, all of the organic cultures, mm -hmm. big on big mama. Mm -hmm. Right? So in um, modern Indo-European culture, the, mm -hmm. um, what we call uh, the pale nations of Europe, mm -hmm. they big mama is the old crone witch. The wick, they call her the wicked witch because she mean. Everybody in every family know big mama mean as hell. <laughs> and she don't mean no harm mm -hmm. and she ain't gonna tell you nothing wrong mm -hmm. but you gotta put up with her sharp ass tongue mm -hmm. right and telling you the truth that you don't want to hear mm -hmm. right so we all got a big mama but in different cultures she's expressed according to the um organic culture of the geography mm -hmm. right in China, she's the old uh, old Asian lady with the big ass cane. Oh, right, 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 right. Right. So in yeah. Asia, they say she who carries big stick carry big weight. Yes, yes. She's big mama. Yeah. Same energy. Same energy. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's the same in Australia. They're matriarchal people, and they've been fighting colonialism to hold their matriarchy together. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's why you have. The uh, ones who follow the old ways live away from the villages and the cities where they populate with patriarchy. It's repulsive to the organic people of the land to uh, masculinize and anthropomorphize prime creator as a masculine figure. And the culture expresses it and we fight it and this is what makes us rebel against religion or embrace religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So you either fight it and submit and embrace it, or you fight it and don't submit and rebel against it. Mm. Right. So it's two poles, two different opposites. But you ain't mm. gonna never find your way out the trap until you can stand in the middle unbiased. Mm. Mm -hmm. Soon as you say somebody religion, race, skin, color. Uh, geographical origin influences the way you think. Mm -hmm. You don't think like a god no more. Mm -hmm. None of that should influence how you think about people. You should make your own decision based on your own life experience. Thanks. Right? So Thanks. Nation of Islam say the white man the devil. Coming to find out the white man ain't even white. Mm -hmm. And they infiltrated the Nation of Islam. Them goddamn devils. So what happened? They tore it down and Farrakhan had to rebuild it. Somebody said in one of my comments, they said uh, uh, Farrakhan was fake because he'd been around 40 years and he ain't did nothing. My response to that, and this is what we should all pay attention to, don't ask us what Farrakhan should have did. Ask what you did in that same amount of time. He rebuilt the tribe that Elijah Muhammad had built with his wife, Claire. Mm -hmm. He restored that which was torn down, mm -hmm. right? Brought it back to the same equal or greater prominence, mm -hmm. right? And then he was able to have the amount of respect across the land in his congregation to be able to communicate with every single gang member on the street with respect. Mm -hmm. Right. So would you say he haven't done nothing? What the fuck is you did? Mm -hmm. Right. You sit there, point your finger and criticize. Accuse the motherfucker of selling out, but you ain't even stepping up. So you ain't even been tested to sell out. You gave up before the game began so you can criticize everybody else for what you didn't do. Ooh, you gave up before the game began. Ooh, okay. So now they sitting back on the other side of the fence, away from the fight, criticizing what another person should do in their sight, but they not man enough or woman enough to step up and do it they self. Mm -hmm. So what Farrakhan do? The Million Man March was sufficient enough achievement in my mind for him to be have solidified his place as a prominent figure in our community. 
-hmm. He had every gang there. No violence. Who else did it? The nigga that criticized and ain't do it. He too busy pointing the finger. Mm -hmm. Who else did it? <clears throat> right? On the heels of that, the sisters took it up on themselves to have a million woman march that was successful. Thanks. Under the leadership of Minister Louis Farrakhan. So the person that's asking me, though, know, that's accusing him of being a sellout, I'm asking you, what the fuck did you do? While we struggling for liberation, freedom, and awakening the minds of our people, you criticize it. You don't like the way I do it. You don't like the way Farrakhan do it, but you ain't man enough or woman enough to do it yourself. You ain't going to never get free as long as you think like a slave. Follow a slave's mentality, you get a slave's reward. If you don't recognize your Stockholm Syndrome by identifying with the enemy, by cutting down the people, the very people that's coming to give you a hand and lift you up, but they ain't doing nothing because they ain't doing what you think they should be doing. You don't even understand the fight you in from a spiritual aspect and you trying to tell somebody else how to fight. Mm -hmm. You don't even know you still a goddamn slave and you worried about what somebody else didn't do. I'm not an Al Sharpton fan, but he didn't did most of most of these finger pointing Negroes. <laughs> even if he did sell out, he still did more. At least he tried before he failed. You understand what I'm saying? Wait, At least he tried before he failed. With you saying that, uh, Rod, I, I see you posted Dr. Malachi York on your Instagram. Yes, sir. What's your thoughts? You know, because he's real controversial. A lot of people say he did some crazy shit. Um, yeah, so I, let, let's go over the crazy shit. Since we're yeah. dealing with the slander of yeah. the leadership, this is why we ain't got no effective leaders because we got too many people criticizing with no facts. So they accuse him of touching these kids. So they say they're going to link him to all of the cases through a genetically traceable strain of herpes. The problem is that Malachi don't have herpes, never had herpes, and he's been going to the doctors for, every, for an annual visit, which included a full STD span since the 70s. So he only had herpes long enough to get a herpes to these kids and then turned around and went to prison and got rid of the herpes since they've been testing him in there. He still don't got herpes. Make it make sense. If you don't understand the intricacies and the details, keep your mouth shut till you get the receipt. You can't have herpes for three years and don't got it no more. Or you can't have it only when the victims come up but every time you go to the doctor, it's not there. Herpes is traceable. I, it's traceable by genetics. They use it to confirm uh, pre sexual predators on a regular basis. So this in and of itself tell you he was falsely accused, let alone all of the accusers was paid a monument by the government to sell him out. So if you don't know the intricacies of the case, then you shouldn't speak on it. We always speak on something we don't know about. That's one of the problems that's keeping us divided, conquered, and subjugated. Mm -hmm. Stop speaking on what you don't know about. Read the case. Read the case files. Read the rebuttal. They didn't have jurisdiction of original origin. They could have uh, dismissed the case on jurisdiction alone. But they was determined to override the law in order to misapply the law. They had to bend the law to make it fit his case. They had to create a crime in order to accuse him of it. It's the same thing they did to Jeff Ford and Larry Hoover. They doing the crime. They accusing our leadership of the crime while they in the commission of the act. They doing it. They got caught. So they accusing them of being drug dealers. You can't get that quantity of drugs if you're making more than a couple thousand dollars, a couple hundred thousand dollars selling drugs, you're working with the feds, knowingly or unknowingly. When somebody bringing tons of drugs over here and you are responsible to try to hold your community together from behind bars, the best you can do is manage it. Mm -hmm. 
You can't stop it because you ain't out there to put the strategies in play and the ones out here don't have the leadership capability or else you wouldn't need motherfuckers from to, to be oppressed in prison to keep the effectiveness from the community. They didn't kill Fred Hampton because um, his skin color alone. They killed him because how he was able to communicate across the skin color barrier, the religion barrier, and his ability to unite people. They was more scared of that, right? Than they was of just him because he was one of us. That leadership, we, you gotta stop letting them kill our leaders. All they leaders is pedophiles and blood drinkers. Mm. And we let they leaders tear our leaders down using the media that they control. You, with court systems that they using to implement martial law on the land. They don't have what you call proper jurisdiction to begin with. Everything outside DC is under tribal rule, tribal law, the law of the land, oral tradition, right? So when they imposing they written laws on us, they overstep in their jurisdiction, they overstep in their boundaries. But we so busy letting helping them to tear our leadership down. And then we wonder why don't nobody want to step up and help us. Right? We the baddest people on the planet. So busy tearing each other down that we can't even help ourselves. Right? Because we following the script that the enemy brought. Mm -hmm. Go back to your own culture. Go back to your own ways, and then we won't be falling for the banana in the tailpipe. Right? H. Rap Brown, they charged him, gave him life or so many years for shooting the police. If you watch the trial, pull his trial up on court TV and watch that shit and tell me you can actually believe this man is guilty. Right? But what we do, they got his ass. Lucky it wasn't me. We laugh at the leaders that fall, but won't none of them, the one that's doing all of the laughing, step up and do nothing about the condition. They talking about reparations. I'm telling them we got something bigger than reparations. That's pocket change. They got you focused on reparations, so you won't never realize you don't need it if you get the imposters off the land. But we, they got us in fighting about reparations. Oh, it, reparations is easy. It's a formula to get reparations. We don't match the formula is the reason we not getting reparations. Well, what's the formula? First of all, <clears throat> you got to have a central government. See, hmm. when they paid the Japanese, they had a government in, in the uh, nations that represented them. We don't got that. Hmm. Because we surrendered it when we accepted the settlers' government as our government. You forfeit your right then. Mm -hmm. So you ain't going to never get reparations. Because you can't even identify the correct homeland to start setting up the governmental structure with a centralized leadership that can lobby for you on the world stage. Because you're too busy laughing at your leaders when they fall. And the mm. enemy cutting them down left and right. He telling you he cutting them down. He publishing it in his books. He putting it on his news screen and you going along to get along. Mm. Right? So we watching the Iran Contra scandal play out. How they deceive Ricky Ross. And so and they didn't deceive him into selling drugs to get money. They deceived them to the fact that they was the feds. <laughs> That's called entrapment. They ain't supposed to do that. And if it's discovered they did, that's supposed to automatically vindicate him by something called qualified immunity. So when you sitting here watching the government do all the dirt, but you letting them cut down your own leadership, you become just as much a part of the problem as the oppressor. Y'all on the same playing field on the same side of the field now. You sold out without ever getting a dime for it. Because the, the gossip is free. 
So you sold out without getting nothing for it for your gossip, spreading your uh, opinions that serve no ends to the resolution to the condition. Mm. I ain't want no parts of this shit. Because when I went to them, they all told me I didn't know nothing. So since I don't know nothing, y'all figure it out. Hmm. And then yeah. I heard Farrakhan on the speech saying that we need some, he needs some help. Nigga, he go to help. Y'all didn't shut the door on me before. Shut it again. I won't be back. I didn't study these motherfuckers from asshole to appetite. I know exactly how they move. I know what they do. I know they don't match us. The ones that's organic to this land over here, they call America. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they want to call us. We wasn't called none of that shit before they came. It ain't part of our culture. Mm -hmm. It's repugnant to the conscious mind to accept being called black, Negroes, Moors. It's repugnant to the conscious mind that's truly conscious. Before 1492, we wasn't over here talking about no Moors or no Morocco. So you don't um you don't get with the whole no Muju Ali, the whole Moors. No Muju Ali is a different story. Cause he the one told me to study them motherfuckers. Cause he said get a good Moorish education. But he made it clear you understand he was a Cherokee high chief on the land. And he that did. he knew there was somebody on the land who don't belong here. That's then usurp the government from the people of the land. Mm -hmm. But in international law, it's always something called a redemption process to reclaim anything that was stolen from you at the Jubilee. This is the Jubilee. We reclaiming our shit. Mm -hmm. Our people just got to wake up to the fact that when we say free Larry Hoover, it's because he is the spokesperson for the chiefs across the land. Mm -hmm. It don't got nothing to do with, okay, so they caught, they say he was a gang chief. So? They had warlords as the president. Despots, pedophiles, rapists, boy molesters as the president. So I'd rather have a gang chief for a leader than have all that slimy ass shit on my hands. If he was the chief and where our culture is matriarchal, who's Who's Big Mama overlooking Larry Hoover? Who, who? You know um, what I'm saying? Khadija Muhammad. Who, who's that? I'm not sure. Khadija Muhammad is Minister Farrakhan's wife. She is indigenous to the land. Mm -hmm. Right now, she have the most matriarchs under her direct command as, as the MGTGCC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And then when you take the affiliation of the uh, Moorish Women's Consulate by but she automatically becomes heir to that on the Islamic connection. So now she didn't took over all they shit by supporting her husband. Hmm. Because she got the, she got the birthright to the land to draw the matriarchs together. Right. And when you draw the matriarchs together, the men have to clear the way. So this is why when you hear about the Orisha, you hearing about, the Ogun and the Oshun mm -hmm. and the Legba, you seeing them swinging them fucking blades, the openers of the way, clearers of the path, high John the conqueror, low John the clocker. This is what they talking about. The chiefs on the land had this obligation to our women right. to restore okay. our prominence by unifying mm -hmm. our people at the grassroots yeah. level to individually in their own individual capacity affirm their organic rights to the land by saying mm. enough is enough. Mm, mm. We They have to produce Hoover because his job as the law of the land is to, re, is to speak for the round table of all of the chiefs across the land. Mm -hmm. the, the leadership is not the problem. They are united. They waiting on the clans to, to wake up, to realize we've been in a long, drawn out, protracted struggle for freedom and liberation, and now it's time for us to stand up and take it. And we tucking our tail between our legs and we pointing our fingers at everybody, but we ain't looking at ourselves, which brings us to the shadow work part of the video. Yes, very important. Please explain what is what is shadow work and how do we do it, my brother? Shadow work is you directly addressing those negative traits and characteristics 
that you don't even want to accept the fact are in your character. Mm. Right? So um, anything that's repugnant to you and somebody else, make sure you're not the one doing it. If you if gossip is what you use as your tool to judge a good person and you a gossiping motherfucker, then you ain't did your shadow work. You projecting, you're saying you project. Right. right. So you so busy judging everybody else, you ain't even took time to do the critical analysis of the self. The critical analysis of the self allows you the opportunity to grow from a mortal to immortal self. Mm. right this is why they say they call it the dark night of the soul when you're really doing the shadow work dark night of the soul right because mm. you go through all of the purging of those negative traits and you also cleaning up your family tree when you do it mm. important very important right because <clears throat> while you correcting the error in you your good ancestors is telling the ancestor that was influencing you in that energy sit your ass down and let the baby do his work mm. <laughs> right and sometimes they got the fight up there as mm. above so below you're talking about the astral realm. right spirit realm sure yeah right so we still connected to them spiritually we just not they not here physically present mm. but they influence reside in the code that's written in our DNA. Mm -hmm. Where our weaknesses is, is where we need to make the correction to get rid of the weaker ancestral trait in order to produce a higher ancestral projection into the future. Right? So it's it's a game of a uh, relay. Everybody get a chance to work on themselves so that they can make a better way for the generation to come. That's our job cross the land it's a game i love that i love that analogy a game of relay okay excellent bro okay right so we the elders now so they told me get your old ass up there and t tell them i said i don't want to tell them they say why you don't <laughs> want to tell them i said because Farrakhan told them elijah told them malcolm yeah. told them uh -huh. martin told them all the way back to then mark vasey told them prince hall told them Garvey told them and they still didn't listen. What the fuck make you think they're going to listen to me? And what they said? You ain't going to never know till you try. Mm. You ain't going to never know till you try. If you don't like the way the world is, do something about it. Right? Yeah. So I didn't like the world was, but I still wasn't going to do nothing about it. I just wasn't going to bring no progeny into this motherfucker. The side effect was I accidentally, well, it was, I deliberately brought a child into this world. Now I'm obligated to change it so that my son's future is better than my past. Right. Right. So when I, when he get to be the elder, he should not be working on racism, sexism, yeah. confused genders. Yes. Right. Broken homes. That shouldn't be his job. Right. So since I'm here, Right. Since I offered up the solution by restoring us, telling us to just return back to our organic ways. Demand they produce the chief. Right. So on the 22nd, we had a cyber parade. Right. And the cyber parade was designed to interfere with the algorithms to fuck up the uh, economic system. Because the economic system now is down to relying on the algorithm of the advertising dollar because the markets have been strangled. Right? So this is why on the 23rd, the market started dropping. Right? All this is related. You know, Rod, I heard you describe yourself in previous videos as a, I don't know, I don't, if I misquote you, let me know, as a Native American witch doctor. Yep. So could you explain to the people what exactly do you mean by Native American witch doctor? What does that entail, my brother? People are very curious about who you are. Okay, so in the Christian world, they got preachers and reverends. Mm -hmm. Right? I ain't no Christian. Mm -hmm. In the Islamic world, they have imams and sheikhs. I ain't, I ain't in the Islamic world. In the Hebrews, they have rabbis and kohanes. I ain't no Hebrew. 
I'm an organic indigenous person to this land and I follow the religious, the religious practice or the spiritual practice of my ancestors, which is tuning ourselves into nature in order to solve the problems of humanity by offering up the insight of the priest. The priest in the, in the organic sense is a witch doctor or a wise doctor, right? But he's not a medical doctor that poison you with pills. He teaches you how to live in harmony with nature and use nature as your first source to cure your ails. By properly taking care of your connection with nature, it involves how you eat, how you breathe, and how you sleep, right? So when you in tune with nature, then you can have the, a, a life that's pretty much as long as you choose to be here. Facts, definitely, definitely. All right, um, let's, uh, before we continue, family, I want to thank everybody. We're about at the half an hour mark. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We got about 1,200 people in, in here. I want all of y'all, please make sure you hit the like button. Very important that we uh, when we in here deep like this, we hit the like button and we continue to grow and more people continue to discover this information because this information that the brother Rod Hayes is dropping is uh, very important. It's not just what he's saying, it's how he say it. And that is vital when a person comes with this invisible energy force that we feel, but we don't know how to describe. And I think this brother's gifted with that uh, that gift right there. So um, yeah, make sure you hit the like button, family. Uh, I want to ask you about um, uh, the, the date that just passed. So how important was it? Like It was the Pluto return yeah, for this right. country. Yeah. Right. So it not only did it fall on uh, the the Pluto return fall on the twenty second. That's also was President's Day. That also was George Washington's birthday. Mm -hmm. Right. So all these things are it's called a convergence. Mm -hmm. So you imagine streams of energy coming in from different places, putting all of the pressure at a central point. Right. Mm -hmm. So we call that an opening of a portal. Numeral. It's significant in numerology, it's mm -hmm. significant in astrology, and mm -hmm. then it becomes twice as significant on Earth. Mm. Twice right? as, okay. So this is why we chose that for the cyber parade to ride that energy to try to get as many of our people to understand that this COINTEL operation, COINTEL Pro operation to shut our people down is unsuccessful that shit not working no more we know what they done and it's recorded and they wrote it down right so cointel pro is not a myth or a conspiracy theory it is a government confessed operation to interrupt us the organic people of the land who they don't want to come together in unity and stand up in their individual capacity to say hey Tell Larry to come out here and tell us what the go what the hell going on and who is this puppet that mm -hmm. they got bouncing around talking about E. Joe Biden. <laughs> tell us what's really going on on the land because that's his job. Not his job because he was elected into Congress and the Senate. His job because the collection of chiefs say whenever one of our soldiers figure it out, that's the chairman. He gonna mm -hmm. have to tell the story now. So when I come and tell you the story of what happened and I tell you, we were invaded by some people called conquistadors. Mm -hmm. They killed off the chiefs. Mm -hmm. oh, and the, the slaughter began the day after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving was the day of the turkey, which was a, a festival, a harvest festival in honor of the chief of the local clans. The, the turkey feathers, tails feathers, in full spread represent the feathers around the heads of the chief. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. so they don't tell you that part. Black Friday, the result was because they gave them fire water and turkey. Mm -hmm. Y'all know turkey has an amino acid called tryptophan that puts you to sleep. Mm -hmm. That's why on Thanksgiving, after we go to grandma's house and eat, we all laying around talking and half the room sleep. Mm -hmm. Right? We chipped off and uh, intoxicated. <laughs> they try to keep us awake with a football game. Mm 
mm-hmm. important event keep us moving around so we don't fall asleep mm-hmm. you know so it's all psychology sociology applied to military strategy mm. right the united states has never been bigger than the 10 square miles called washington dc it was always a private corporation doing business on indian land Mm. They call it. We call it Big Mama Land. Big Mama Land. It's the physical expression of living on Big Mama. It's the it's the all of the daughters bringing their baby to get blessed by Big Mama, the Earth. Mm. It's the <clears throat> Earth blessings. It's called Earth rights. They villainized it and called it Voodoo, mm. and said Voodoo is evil. Mm. Right. And we fall for that because we don't know better. When you know better, you're obligated to do better. Mm. Right? So my mama told me that. So she holding me to it. Right? So what everybody else before me was asked to do, they didn't get done. I did the dirty work. The cleanup man shit. Right, right, I right. Of, I dived out of bounds to grab the ball before it go out of bounds. Right? slid across the uh the baseball field to catch the pop fly that's a, barely about to make it mm. right all of the stuff the dirty work on the team that nobody the cleanup man with the part nobody else want to do mm. the dennis rodman work <laughs> the dennis rodman work okay so, now now we understand it the dennis rodman work R- You, yeah, pardon us, family. While Rod gets his uh his situation together, a little technical difficulties happening. It's all right, you know, that happens, and we get it together as soon as we can. I want to continue to thank y'all for viewing uh, this broadcast Saturday night. Make sure you hit the like button, family. This is so important for us to know. You can feel it in the air. You can feel it in the ether. You can feel it in your body. The f- the fabric of your body, the change is happening. The shows that I'm doing, I know y'all feel more than y'all have in the past. This is this is amazing what we're doing now, family. It's scary. It's going down right now. It's going down, family. It's going down. Here go the brother right here. Peace, peace. Yeah. All right, we back now. We back. <clears throat> there, somebody had called in. I thought I had my do not disturb on. That's why I was trying to use the other phone. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, um, do you remember where you left off or the Dennis Rodman dirty work? The dirty work, yes. Yeah, that's the stuff <laughs> don't nobody want to do. Don't the guy that cleaned up the horse shit after the races, don't nobody give him no accolades. Facts, facts. He don't get no awards, no plaques. Facts. He just get to go home smelling like horse shit. Mm. He don't complain as long as it can help him take care of his wife and his kids. He show up bright and early the next morning, just like he was the jockey. He might even beat them there. Mm-hmm. They the ones get all of the shine at the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> they don't never call a stable hand out there and raise his hands and, and thank him for cleaning up the horse shit. But mm-hmm. it still has to be done to keep a clean stable. Mm-hmm. Somebody got to clean up the horse shit. Mm-hmm. Somebody got to do the part that all the rest of us not, don't want to do because it's the hard part, mm-hmm. right? So this is a, this is our life training. The hardest head get the hardest lesson. Mm. The hardest lesson become the most memorable experience. Mm. Once you know, you can't unknow. Yes, sir. To experience it for yourself, be able to relay a convincing story that's based in truth. Right? So when they put a, a job in front of me, Larry Hoover said we gangbanging. He be brain banging. He said, we ain't gang banging. Let, he said, let the fools gang bang. We need somebody to buckle down in the books. Right? We need somebody to study the problem from the outside. You can't get tatted up. You can't get GD put all on your arms and shit. You can't do that. You stay unidentified, folks. A UFO. Fly right under the radar and keep studying. Mm-hmm. walk right through the valley of death the penitentiary struggle 
-hmm. but keep studying right then when you get out and you finish your parole and you working in the real job keep studying use everything they use to oppress us as the means of the come up so if i gave them an hour in work i got me two hours of study in on their computer system you understand me they're not gonna get more of my time than i'm gonna get mm. and they're not gonna pay me enough ever to give me what i think i'm worth because they're not worth what i think i'm worth mm -hmm. right <clears throat> so now they got rain man trying to solve a math problem that's the right guy for it slightly autistic a little bit quirky and weird but he know how to do the math right he the one don't nobody want around because when he come in he nut up when mm -hmm. shit not right mm -hmm. and everybody is comfortable with the shit not being right so then i'm the one ain't supposed to say nothing because i know what i'm talking about and i might infect somebody else with some shit called the truth right right now that's the most offensive thing you can tell somebody because if you tell them the truth and it's not the truth they want to hear you become their sworn enemy <laughs> and you ain't done nothing wrong but told the truth because now they held to they're not mad that you told them the truth they mad because the truth came from you right. but they didn't get it first they didn't get it yeah right but they didn't do the work to get them to the part where they can understand the problem sufficient enough to do the math because they was too busy accusing everybody else and not doing nothing while they wasn't doing nothing calling everybody hypocrites and sellouts and they don't know nothing about them we can see we can have an opinion about everybody we see in the public but we don't know them people we don't know none of them people we ain't never met them 98 percent of us ain't never met them face to face right they saying larry a gangbanger got more degrees than anybody in motherfucking dc right mm -hmm. but ain't none of us took the time to write him a letter to find out his part his point of view his angle his perspective right they told us chief malik angel bay aka jeff ford was about to commit acts of terrorism on our land, on domestic soil. They called him a domestic terrorist. And then after that, you know what these son bitches did? What? They blew up the World Trade Center the first time in 91 and blamed it on the Arabs. Mm. Then they blew up the federal building in Oklahoma. And blamed, and blamed it on blamed Timothy. On good old boy. Timothy McVeigh. And Terry Nichols. Mm -hmm. Right? Then they fucking flew planes into the building in 9-11 told us that some motherfuckers overseas done it and then when the fbi report come out the fbi files come out coming to find out it was dick cheney and george bush behind it the whole time the whole time so that they could have an excuse to kill saddam hussein because he put a hit on george bush in 92. look this shit up it's, it's some real shit he put a hit out on george herbert walker bush after he left office, I think of 92, 93, right? And his retaliation, because he didn't have nothing he could do as a president of renown because he was a babbling idiot, right? We call him G-Dummy, yeah. right? So he want to get back at Saddam. He's trying to figure out a way to fight a war with Saddam Hussein. Okay, now he got oil interests because you know they've been in the oil business, the Prescott side of the family, since the early 1900s, late 1800s. They also international banking family, the Prescott family, right? So when you get down to the Bushes, who became uh, Bushes under a marriage union, right? These motherfuckers turn around and finance the whole bin laden thing we forget you can look this up the mujahideen was was funded by the cia and the mujahideen was created by the cia to defend afghanistan's northern border from russia <clears throat> right cia the cia went and extracted saddam hussein after assassination attempt on the iraqi uh, head of state 
he was in exile. They put him back in the royal house so that he could have, a, uh, have my man assassinated, and he took over the government in what they call an in-house coup. And the CIA funded it and, and designed it all. Look it up. Ain't none of this shit a secret. Mm. Right? So now, <clears throat> Ronald Reagan getting ready to take office, so they fly a plane into the Nevada desert and tell us our people got kidnapped by Iranians. We didn't find out into the 90s that that was a movie set in Nevada. Hmm. That they end up using the very same footage from the movie uh, set to make the movie about the uh, hostages in Iran and put that shit in our face like we some real idiots because we some real idiots. We not going to never pay that no attention. Ain't none of us looking at that. Right? So once they make the deal, now they trying to get drugs into our community. You got to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. If you read Behold a Pale Horse, he'll tell you naval intelligence, above top secret, read the documents, telling you the, the format of the Bush family to bring the cocaine in on the oil rigs so they don't get searched. Because the oil rigs was diplomatic property and they were uh, exempt from search. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So they family is an oil family. Here we go back to the Saudi ties. Mm -hmm. Right? And so what do they do? They make these connections all to oppress us and keep us from ever realizing who the fuck we is. Mm -hmm. So they undermine our leadership, everything they doing they accusing our leaders of doing it. They accusing our entertainers of doing the things that they entertainers is doing. Right? So that we can all look the same dirty. It's okay because it's going to come out. Mm -hmm. Right? Some of us had to go in soldiers undercover. Mm -hmm. Like Lawrence Fish burned on deep cover. Mm -hmm. Right? In order to figure out what's going on on our land. This our shit. Been our shit for millennia. Hmm. Right? Noble Drew Ali said time never was when man was not. Hmm. Right? What is he talking about? We was before they construct the time used to trap our minds. We were, we were roaming this land before their construct of time was used to trap our minds. What do you, what do you think about... Um... A lot of people say a lot, you know, the ancient Egyptians was over here and that's why we have places like Memphis look, look, and look, stuff. Look, look, and, look. and they hold on, hold on, Rod, hold on, Rod. And they even say, they even say the pyramids, the Grand Canyon got a lot of ancient Egyptian shit in it. And that's why they closed it off to the majority of the plug public. But the Grand Canyon got a lot of ancient Egyptian shit. Oh, Brother Rod, talk to me about the ancient Egyptian influence on America. There is no ancient Egyptian influence on mm. America, mm -hmm. but there is 100% an ancient American, American influence, influence on, Egypt. on Egypt. I just, okay, you got to explain that, brother. Quetzalcoatl yeah. is Thoth. Thoth created Egypt, period. Yes. yes. Quetzalcoatl is from South America, mm -hmm. and Quetzalcoatl is Thoth. Thoth created Egypt. Mm hmm. Egypt back then was nothing more than Hollywood. That's it. In ancient times, you say. In ancient times, it was Hollywood. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. We had we used to leave Arizona mm -hmm. to an energy gate created by Thoth and walk straight to Egypt in 10 seconds. The fuck out of here. Woo, it's I still there. What with uh, with Sedona? It's still there, down in the in the mountains, in the Arizona yeah. desert. Wow. You ain't when you start getting close, you start getting interfered with by people in black suits mm -hmm. wanting to know what the fuck you doing over there. Yeah. You said Egypt is nothing but Hollywood. And wow, okay. The I real shit, the yeah. real shit was over here. It's over here, right? Mm. This is where all the real juice was. This is where Big Mama House was here. So the the juice wasn't Africa is supposed to be. Big look, Mama's house. That, look, that's where the natural resources are. Look, 
Yeah. The juice is over here. Mm. Right? Mm. They don't call this the promised land for no reason. And they don't call it God's country for no reason. That's mm. not an accident and that's not Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? They, the Christians want you to believe and the Jews and the Muslims want you to believe the Middle East is the yeah. spot. Right, 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 right. That's some bullshit. Mm. Because this was the spot before the Middle East even knew what Abraham could spell like. Mm. They had no alphabets over there in the Middle East when this was the shit. Right? They got us believing that all our castles is prisons. Because mm. they don't want us to know we got castles all over the land. Mm. We got pyramids and mounds for holy, uh, for religious, well, spiritual retreats all over the land. You go on a spiritual retreat to tune in the nature. You create the mounds in order to harness the energy. Yes. Right. And what you build the mound is determining what you harness the energy. And you normally form the shape of the mound. Right. According to the energy you're trying to harness. That's why some of them shaped like a snake. Some you know, shaped like an elephant. All different kind of stuff. I want you to expound on this because what you said was interesting. I just had a brother turtle gang on here who said something similar about how you know, our culture influenced Egypt instead of Egypt influencing our culture. Um, I want to I'm, I'm, I want to talk about Stone Mountain. Now, I heard a uh, brother that's a metaphysical teacher in the community for many years named Bobby Hammond. I don't know if you ever heard of him. I know he is. But yeah, brother Bobby said that the black granite from Stone Mountain, they took that black granite in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia, in Stone Mountain, and they put that on a capstone of the Great Pyramids. So he was talking about how important this Stone land Mountain is over was here. A pyramid. Right. But, okay, so expound on Stone Mountain. Did, did they take... Cause Look, I, Stone yeah. Mountain was an actual black pyramid. Mm -hmm. Right? So the movie play it calls it the uh, Dark Tower. <clears throat> what, what movie? What movie? Dark Tower. That's the movie. Okay, I didn't see that movie. The movie's called Dark Tower. Right. It's okay. about a giant dark crystal shooting out the earth at the center. So Stone Mountain's the center of the earth? What are you saying? It's not the center of the earth, but that's what the movie about. Okay. But okay. Stone Mountain is a black pyramid similar to that. It's also one in Alaska. In Alaska, okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, no These problem. pyramids all over the place. They all got different properties according to the energy you want to harness. Mm -hmm. It's like, and one thing you need gas for power, another thing you need electrical exactly. power. Yeah. Right? Some stuff you use water for power. Mm -hmm. Right? So some things you use coal for power. You mm -hmm. use different stuff. It's just like different crystals have different properties. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So the stone that's, that Stone Mountain is organically made of, it's formed into a actual crystalline structure mm -hmm. it's a pyramid mm -hmm. is one of the older ones because the oldest ones grow forests on them and they call them mountains mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. after sitting for so long un unused they get covered with soot the soot turns to dirt mm -hmm. then vegetation uh gonna naturally spring from the dirt it's the yeah. law of nature uh -huh. This just like the Great Pyramid of China. Right? You familiar with that one? Yeah, I just want to... I, I I was able to find a picture of Stone Mountain. This is a picture of Stone Mountain right here. <laughs> it, it's obvious it's a pyramid. <laughs> it's obvious. Oh, and look man. at the surrounding layout. This is a typical of our architecture. Yeah. Because you see those river basins? Yes. Those are moats. But you, over the time, this is what happened to the Great Moats. Remember, when they give you the description of the great Atlant or Atlantis, they tell you it's concentric rings to a center. Mm -hmm. Because Big Mama House is always at the center of our community. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And we all got a Big Mama, and all of the Big Mamas get together, and they choose a Big Mama out of all the Big Mamas. Mm -hmm. Right? This is how we had the matriarchal structure. Mm -hmm. So if you can't see that's a pyramid, I feel for you. I just can't reach you right now. Right. Facts. Facts. <clears throat> Facts. Pull up Black Pyramid of Alaska. 
Okay. Give me one second. You keep talking. I'm going to pull it up. Right. right. So when you understand that we was here, the mission is follow the biblical code. The biblical code is a supplanter code. What is a supplanter? It's an underminer. Who is the supplanter? Jacob. Who did he supplant? Esau. What's the description of Esau? He was ruddy, red, and hairy. The red man is who? The red man of the Americas. The ruddy red man is dark ass red. Mm -hmm. That's why they put ruddy in front of it instead of just red. Right? And dark red is this color. Almost brown. Is this the... Uh... That's the one. Mm. So this is in Alaska. Mm-hmm. So what's up? What's the science on this right here, Rod? What, what's this? What's going on with this right That's here? A, we had to stop using that one because they opened a portal Stargate. The Stargate portal was part of a three-point flux on Earth. Mm -hmm. It went from this pyramid system mm -hmm. to La Palma to southern southwestern Mexico. Mm -hmm. And in in that's how the enemy was able to escape the last great cleanup to mm. get wicked off of Earth. So when you read in the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, he said that the Dark Brothers had escaped. You know, when he got rid of them the first time, they was able to be called back in by the priests of the Earth. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. He also tell you about creating Egypt in the Emerald Tablets, too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so all of this is known to uh, what you call uh, academic scientists. Right. Egyptologists knew this already. Right. World historians knew it already. It's a secret. Mm. Kept in the Masonic Lodge and you ain't supposed to know and I'm telling it. Yes, sir. How do you know, brother? Because I studied the Masonic Lodge to find out what they teach. And when I found out what they teach, I began to study how they communicate. And once I studied how they communicate, I began to be able to read their language. Mm -hmm. And I could tell you what they said in the signs and symbols because I study signs and symbols. Mm -hmm. All of their information is public information. Mm -hmm. The only secret is you ain't supposed to know you organic to the land until you wake up of your own accord. Mm -hmm. The first one wake up, his job is to wake everybody else up. He become the alarm clock. Well, here I am, screaming like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Hey, Rod, I heard you talk about in another interview also uh, remote viewing. Now, you talked earlier about voodoo and how... You know, they, they called it evil. A lot of this, the our ancient sciences, our people consider pseudo bullshit or whatever word, verb, adjective you want to use. But they just think it's, you know, some hocus pocus shit. Can you talk to us about uh, remote viewing? Do you use it? How effective it is? Uh, all that stuff, my brother. I do use control remote viewing when I want to find out difficult to find out events. And I need to go back and see what they were. I used the techniques that was developed by the CIA called Control Remote Viewing. Mm. Um, made a parody in the movie called Being Men Who Stare at Goats. Mm. Right? But it's based on a true story. When they dismantled Germany, um, Russia got all of the kooky sciences that they call fringe sciences. America got all the technicians in Operation Paperclip. Look it up. Operation Paperclip, when they began to find out the Russians knew all of the intelligence, but they couldn't figure out how they was doing it until a KGB agent defected and told them that they were using psychic spies to, to spy on America. So America uh, commissioned the military to study it and find out if it's possible to create a psychic spy. And they formulated a technique called controlled remote viewing, where you can develop the mind to see distant places, what they call um, by location in your vision, where your mind can go to a place where your body can't. 
That's powerful. So um, is this something that we're all naturally gifted with? Is this something we knew how to do when we was young and we forgot because of the indoctrination? Is it hard? What would you say to somebody who wants a remote view right now, controlled remote view right now? So it's instructional videos on YouTube from the from the creators, but I use the manual personally as my study guide. The the manual you can pick it up on Amazon for about ten dollars mm. or less if it's used. Mm. But the the thing about it is it's the same technique as tarot card reading. Mm. It's just in tarot card you are learning more detail tuning of the senses than you do in control remote viewing but the benefit of learning control remote viewing is it if it's um applicable sooner than being able to intuit the tarot cards effectively mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm. i'm going to talk to you about um our music uh you mm -hmm. keep talking about that uh, organic people of the land uh is is the music what would you consider organic music does it does it matter if it's vulgar if it talks about pussy popping shooting this shooting that what's what do you think is uh because maybe that, that might be subjective but it's our music no matter what our music is talking about is telling mm -hmm. us is telling us the chiefs what's going on on the land mm -hmm. if it's talking about pussy popping booty shaking if it's talking about um, robbing, stealing, killing, drug dealing, it's all telling, the, it's like a news reporter. Mm -hmm. We can't get accurate news from the news media, but the stories that come across redundant in the rap is the grievance that's vexing mm. the community. Mm. Okay. Right? And those okay. things that come out as love stories in the song is the affection of the community. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we, we can tell the status of relationships by the content of the love song. Yes. So we know where the, where the family relationships is. When we hear uh, songs like Ain't Nothing Going On But The Rent, we understand <laughs> You knew what that, was going on at that time. <laughs> right. We know what's going on in the community is the sisters is getting, to, getting frustrated to the point where if you ain't bringing something to the table, they're not letting you sit down. Right. Right. So because in our real our real culture, our women will give you all of the money if you about something. Mm -hmm. But so many of them got burnt by motherfuckers. That was a waste of space and taking up oxygen that real people could be breathing. They become scorned and then they start telling the next dude ain't nothing going on but the rent. Got to have a J.O.B. If you want to pay with me, I know the song. That means that I, I got it going on. But the, the woman rent. don't really care if you got a job or not. She'll go get one. Facts, facts. But you got to be willing to pick up the slack where she fall off. If she go out and work, you got to be willing to do the housework. Right? Some women don't want to stay at home for raising the kids for 30 years. They want to go out and experience the world as a worker. Mm-hmm. Right, worker give them the opportunity to meet new friends, form new alliances, and find out what's going on with the sisters across the land. So some of them have to work. It's ingrained in them to do this investigation. So mm -hmm. the guy that they pick have to be willing to understand the culture enough to know that when a woman is trying to work, she ain't just trying to go to work. Mm -hmm. She's trying to he find out what we need to be doing in our relationship to help the land heal, mm -hmm. right? Heal the people on the land. We can, we're more concerned about mm -hmm. our people than we are about ourselves, mm -hmm. because the plight of our people is going to be the overall plight of our children. Mm -hmm. Right? So if we could care about the future, we have to protect the future by protecting the children. Right? Because when we get done raising the children, guess what they go on the future. Mm -hmm. So we own the now. As the adults and as the elders, we own the now. That's our job. But what we're going to do with it in order for it to be a benefit for our children so that the future, they shouldn't have to solve the same stupid problems that we work working with that our parents didn't solve. 
right? Mm -hmm. So we, they got us fighting for civil rights. Civil rights is fighting to be a part of a corporation as a civil servant. Mm. As a civil servant, you become a trustee in the slave camp. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? But we didn't know it. That's why Martin came out when the, Elijah told him what was going on because he didn't know. Right? So when Elijah came out and told him what was going on, he told us, I think I might, oh, he told Harry Belafonte, I think I might have integrated my people into a burning house. Mm -hmm. What is he talking about? The fall of America. Elijah Muhammad wrote a book mm -hmm. called The Fall of America. Mm -hmm. Right? So all of these things become relevant. When you listen to him explaining the vex and his grievance on the um, NBC um interview he tell the whole story how they displaced us from the land mechanized the land pick people who didn't look like us to replace us as the owners of the land mm -hmm. but the part he didn't know is the niggas that owned the big house wasn't us but they looked like us and they used those people that they call the slave master to hide as the house nigga and that's why our people don't like house niggas if they was not us, who were they? They were conquistadors, black Moors. The Moors. The Moors was the sellouts then. They didn't. They didn't no, they're not sellouts. They were just slaves. You gotta understand. They're the attackers. The attackers. It's a chess game. Okay. So this is why they always tell you that black and white are classifications. Mm, 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 mm. If you don't understand the classification, you can't unravel the deception. Okay. Right. So yeah. as long as you identifying and using the paperwork of your enemy to try to write your way in, into the law as a legitimate person proves you an imbecile in law, which means you have no right to your uh, inheritance of the land. Mm -hmm. But when you when the gig is up is when you realize that they use a nation as a corporation. All nations is governed under uniform commercial code. Uniform commercial code governs all international trade. They've been trading our labor under the false pretense of giving us jobs. They gave us monopoly money called fiat, <clears throat> mm -hmm. right? To replace the gold that they not allowed to use, but they can keep us from using it too. Why they not allowed to use it? Cause it ain't theirs. They have no birthright to it. They got it all under the World Trade Center, under right. under the White House, all under kind of the, places. Yeah. They got them in tunnels everywhere, uh -huh. right? So th those are what they call the royal coffers. Uh -huh. Every land had royal coffers. Europe had their own. The Moors looted it, uh -huh. but they created something called a Kazarian Jew. Uh -huh which was actually bankers from the high mountains of Prussia. Mm. So okay. now you wonder, now you seeing what's going on over there in Russia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a war against the Kazarian mafia. You you connecting dots right now, brother. God damn, you connected some dots. Okay, be careful. Go ahead, talk. Okay, I'm now, sorry. Biden yeah. was on, on the news. Yes. And he said that Putin claimed he mm -hmm. was going into... Um, the Ukraine because they were developing weapons of mass destruction, mm -hmm. right? What did he bomb? He bombed Pfizer, office, uh, 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 labs over there. He bombed Johnson and Johnson labs over there. Who make the vaccine? The facts, yeah. Right. So he, who he trying to protect? Who he trying to get rid of? Right now, he said he was trying to get rid of the cabal. Who who was Trump trying to get rid of? What he called mm. him? Mm. The cabal, right? Mm -hmm. In the cabal, he also called the deep state because mm -hmm. the deep state is those ones who had their uh, real meeting places deep underground in bunkers. Mm -hmm. That's so that me and you don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Unless we know control remote viewing. Mm -hmm. Then we the fly on the wall, Miley Cyrus. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And as the fly on the wall, we get enough in uh, enough information to come through like a wrecking ball. Mm -hmm. 
Talk right. Talk so even even the ones that don't look like us know the code. <clears throat> right. Listen to what she's saying and fly on the wall. She's trying to listen in on a conversation. <clears throat> right. And how do you listen in on the you become the fly on the wall? How do you do that? Control remote viewing. Right. Once you learn control remote viewing, you can actually go look for yourself. I went looking for Jesus and I couldn't find him. <laughs> Come on, brother. Don't don't say that. Don't say that, brother. But I can tell you who I did find. Who you found? Who you found? I found Cleopatra. Ask these ask these and, people where her tomb at. And I'm not even joking. What did she what, what happened when you found her? I'm not, I'm very she was running for her life, is what happened. They told you she committed suicide. Mm. With a, with an adder, mm. don't know. They didn't do that back then. Mm. That's not how they killed themselves. Mm. Just like that model that they said jumped out, jumped that off building, the building. Yeah, that's not how women commit suicide. That's a man. Yeah, yeah. That's out of context. Mm. That mm -hmm. telling us, or chiefs on the land, look at the situation. It ain't what they telling you. It doesn't match. <sighs> and what Johnny Cochran say about the glove with OJ? If it don't fit. You must equip. Right. So yeah. it, if the story don't fit the uh, narrative they uh, give, equip. I'm sorry. <laughs> if the story not fitting the narrative they given, right? Now we know from experience, we can look this shit up. There was a genius they decided to throw out of a building of a mental institution to say he was insane. Right? Because he was revealing top secret information that they didn't know how he got. Right? But the problem was is they couldn't explain how he unscrewed the uh, gate that covered up the window mm -hmm. on the inside and the outside while he was handcuffed. It mm -hmm. didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So the people that questioned it, they called them quacks and conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. The same thing they did with Charles Manson for telling us that they sent him out to start a race war. Mm -hmm. But we mm. so busy listening to the race to war the part, we ain't yeah. understanding that he giving us a warning. Yeah, He telling us all the dirt they told him about poisoning the water with fluoride. Mm. Cutting down the trees so we can't hardly breathe, but we think we breathing normal, but they cutting them down so fast that we have to adapt to breathing on less oxygen, which deprives the brain of breath. Mm. And breath is spirit. Mm-hmm. So if you deprive, deprive somebody of spirit, you're depriving them of life. This is all orchestrated. So then they set the man up, accused him of some murders that he ain't had nothing to do with. They said they knew what Charlie wanted, but he never gave him the order. Make that shit make sense. Mm. But none of us can pay attention enough to the details because we're looking <laughs> at the overall description that the media paint the media is a disinformation specialist 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 how you think a man get off with the twinkie defense the narrative the media painted is what got him off not that he ate a twinkie and killed motherfuckers in front of the courthouse that mm -hmm. didn't get him off mm -hmm. the media narrative is what got him off the media narrative, yes. It's the same with the boy walking down the street shooting motherfuckers. As soon as they called the people looters, he beat the case. <laughs> he became the only competent law enforcement agent on site for a citizen's arrest. Mm. In the minds of the people, that's the oppressor control. Mm -hmm. When they called the people that got shot looters, looters. it's the that's same as saying criminals. It's the same as saying attackers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they said it was a mob which told him that it was a whole bunch of them he automatically have to defend himself mm -hmm. in any property they tend to uh be trying to so-called loot mm -hmm. so whether he was right or wrong became inconsequential to the media onslaught of the disinformation campaign mm -hmm. when they when they get away with saying certain things in the media you done Mm -hmm. Right, because the people following a a, a well written narrative, like they following the storyline on a the movie, they probably can follow the storyline on the movie better. Mm -hmm. 
The storyline in real life is showing you what they're doing in your face. Mm. But it, it makes it into a parody that you can never believe because they attach terms like conspiracy, conspiracy theorists, quack, fringe information, you know. Mm. And then they say that the information ain't true, but they have the documents in their hands while they saying it. Mm, facts. You know. Hey, hey Rod, I want to um take this time to, uh, we, we're getting ready to get to the Q&A from the people Yes, I mean, this, this this whole show has been complete fire so far. I want to thank you for your time. The, you know, it's one thing that people keep asking for, Rod, and this is the beautiful part about our people. Uh, we criticize our people a lot, but what's beautiful about them is that they're willing to support those who support them. So they're asking for your cash app, brother. I want to put your cash app on the screen. And because because you're on my show and because my people support, you know, I got a great audience you, you know you're gonna be blessed, brother. What's your cash app? Um, I'm I'm typing it now. Yeah, make sure you support this brother Rod Hayes out there putting in the work. You see you it? Know. I sent it to you in the um private chat, so you can Let copy see. it. Let me see. Okay. Give me a second, family. I wanna put this brother's uh cash app up. I'm about to share mine. I'm gonna put his as well. I don't. Sure. All right, <clears throat> all right, family. So I got the brother uh, Rod Hayes cash app. Before we get to Q and A, you know how we do on the show. Got the brother Rod Hayes cash app. I got my cash app, man. Make sure you support the individuals who support y'all. I mean, this information that the brothers drop in the pyramids that we just showed for this Alaska. We went to Stone Mountain. We took. Man, listen, if, if you ain't got goosebumps after watching this show so far, I don't know what to tell you. But this is this is it right here. This is what we're supposed to be giving our energy to. So with that being said, family, make sure you hit the like button. That's important. And give me some good questions in the chat room. We're going to get in. It's, uh, we've been on here for about an hour and 20 minutes. We're going to get to about 20, 25 minutes of Q&A. I ain't going to keep the brother on here too long, but we're going to get into about 20 minutes of Q&A. But uh, make sure you support my guests. Make sure you support me for putting this together, being a mastermind. Make sure you support my guests for bringing got, that work. Yeah, got it, brother. I had to say this. As, as a witch doctor, we don't solicit donations. You want me to take it off? Or? Mm -mm. But if somebody asks, okay. then they're allowed to donate. They certainly ask, brother. They but right so i just gotta make that clear because okay i don't never charge nothing like on my platforms when i do lives they can listen to me for free okay or they if sometimes they ask for the cash app mm. i'm obligated to give it to them and this is the reason why reciprocity is the reason okay gratitude offerings facilitates <coughs> the reciprocity it creates the energy circuit if i tell them no when they offer it's blocking their blessings not man mm. Well, that's interesting. That's <clears throat> so interesting. I had to accept it because me accepting it with the gratitude that they gave it, it's an equal exchange. Mm. Right? Mm. And it's facilitated on the return to them by increments of 10. Right? So this is what they be talking about in the church, but they be soliciting donations, which nullifies the effect to the giver. Mm hmm and mm. all of the benefit end up in the hands of the asker instead of the giver who right. wants to give you so blocking that's, it. That's that's why you have to do it this way. That's why you I don't yeah, you don't come in boom, here's my cash up. Mm. You know, it's cuz you have to offer something that the people feel you should be compensated for because mm. nobody else is offering this for free. Mm. And, and they do it out of the goodness of their heart. They that's, that's their obligation to themselves not to me. Mm. Right? They, so they, that way they don't feel beholden to give. They do it of their own free will. They, right? Because they, they want to do it. They're they going to support you on their own free will. I, I hear your phone, brother. <laughs> they are, that I wasn't my it. phone. That oh, was yours. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, let, let's, get, let's get to some questions. I got... Um, yeah. Somebody said, what does he think about Mount Shasta in Cali? What you think, my brother? It's a powerful energy vortex. It's on a ley line. And it's on the ritual site of the old ancients. Mm -hmm. 
So Mount Shasta is a good place to visit. And it's make sure you drink plenty of water out there too. But around the uh, equinoxes, spring, summer, winter, and fall, the energy is highest because that's when they held the festivals in ancient times to draw the energy there. So it's been done for so long in ancient times, the energy still comes through. When the people come through, they interact with the energy and that keeps the energy coming through. Mm. Right. So it's a perpetual uh, cycle of energy based on ancient ceremonial practice on that land. Mm -hmm. That's not the only one around. They, you know, they got them all up and down in Mississippi. Those that's named after the cities of Egypt or the cities of Egypt is named after have uh, mounds in the near proximity where rituals was held at different times of the year. And you get with the natives and they know the land. They know when the rituals was held. They'll naturally congregate there around that time of the year. Mm. It's mm. like Mardi Gras, mm. right? Mardi Gras is an ancient festival. You try to take Mardi Gras away from New Orleans and we're going to tear this bitch up. Mm -hmm. You can take all of the cultural aspects you think you're taking. If you take Mardi Gras, the N.O. will tear this place down. They tried it already and they seen what happened. Mm. It's a part of the culture that the people of New Orleans will not, they not giving it up because that tells us so much information in the Mardi Gras festival. When one of the chiefs go to Mardi Gras, they get a whole report off the parade. Mm. Let's get to the next question. Um, any information on people who help them still are magic? People like Benjamin Banneker, built in Washington, D.C., and Pascal Beverly Matt Randolph, who taught them occult magic. What side were they on? So the only way you can tell what side was they on is by uh, what they put in the public domain. Mm. Right. If what they put in the public domain is not um, legible. Right. Or is so minuscule that you can't put their motives together. They wasn't working for us. <clears throat> OK, let's get to the next question. Once again, family, I got the brothers cash app on the screen. If you are interested, uh, let's get to the next. That's not accurate. That's the, the dollar sign S-I-K-A-P-E. No, the S and the A has to be capital. Okay, I don't want it. So it's dollar sign, capital S, I, K, capital A, P, E. Are you doing that? Can you pin the next question up? Yeah. What's next for melanated people? Organize our uh, grassroots level. And the sky is the limit. Ain't no limit. Melanated people can and always have been able to do whatever they choose to when they support one another. That's right, right there. Okay. Um, let's get to the next question. Okay, 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 okay. Do you know of any pyramids or sacred places in Arkansas? Arkansas is Cherokee territory. Um, I don't remember the exact location, but I know there's mounds in Arkansas, mm -hmm. you know, in various places too. <clears throat> okay. Let's get to the next question. What's Rod's insight? This is our key 44. Shout out that brother. He's been on the show before. What's your thoughts on nuclear fission? Fusion. I'm sorry. Fusion. fusion. Yes. I'm sorry. Right. So now we talking about, um, we talking about splitting atoms. And the nuclear fusion is the core to the nucleus of two uh, atoms become merged. But the side effect of that is, is in order to rebalance, it's going to cause a reaction, a chain reaction. Right. It's the same with the fission. The splitting of the atom mm -hmm. causes the uh, particles to split other atoms. Right. So the fission is going to become like a magnet to attract and cluster other atoms. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, let's uh, get to the next. Uh, 
Why does the fan from the Caribbean fit into the narrative of Native American? What do you suggest those who traded in their nationality to become American citizens do to claim their land? Okay, so in order to become an American citizen, you had to accept your straw man. So you have to go back to your family, have a family reunion, and rename everybody with no birth certificate. Right? And mm -hmm. you give them the name. Your nickname is you using the uh, customs of the land to develop a natural name. Your nickname. Right? Your nickname. Hmm. Right? That's how you end up with do you think Sitting Bull real name was Sitting Bull? <laughs> His real name is Christopher Wallace. Mm. I know. Right? Christopher so, Wallace. Well, we call him Sitting Bull. Yes. Because he was sitting down on the job when they came and he posted kept him out. Mm. Right? So we called him Sitting Bull. He, he was being lazy. He mm. didn't believe the scouts when they told him. Mm. And he got sacked. Right? Mm. Just like Crazy Horse. You know who that is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ODB. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why he had to play the Hayoka, the sacred clown, perform the sacred clown dance and tell the truth in the public domain where they can't do nothing to you because they're going to have you classified as crazy and mentally deranged. Mm -hmm. So, who he say was trying to kill him? He said, Bush and them niggas. Mm -hmm. who, what is he talking about? The deep state, the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. George Herbert Walker Bush was the leader of this part of the country, a world for the Illuminati. Mm. Right? So he was the highest ranking member. How do I know this? Because, and if you read <laughs> uh, Behold a Pale Horse, he gave the exact uh, defense bill that they was that he made himself King George the First of the United States, and no other king, no other president can act without his permission. Mm -hmm. That means that everybody that came after him until his ass was dead was a puppet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, who came after him? His adopted son, Bill Clinton, mm -hmm. right? His real son, G Dummy, mm -hmm. right? And his adopted uh, or his uh, godson, Barry, right? Y'all ain't even know he had a Bush connection, did you? Obama, you mean? Obama. Yep. Yeah. Barry Del Sotoro. That's, mm -hmm. his, that's, his, that's his name. Barack Obama is his stage name, his front name, in order to get the so-called Negro vote. Mm -hmm. See, if he can get most of the Negro vote, he can sway the vote because he can get the uptown vote if he's uh, approved by specific people in the Democratic Party. Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton. Mm -hmm. Bill Clinton. <clears throat> They work for the Bushes, too. Let's get to the next question. Um, what is the significance of the number 19? I guess this is important. We talked about Dr. Malachi York earlier, and I believe he's the one that said we are from the 19th galaxy, which is totally out there for most of our people. So talk about the significance of the number 19, my brother. So that's uh, coming through numerology, um, specifically through Babylonian numerology coming through Islam. 19 is the sacred seal. The sacred seal is called that because it's the alpha is the one. And the omega is the birth process. The end of the birth is nine, nine months. So you got alpha meets omega at 19. So you seal it with the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. right and then if you add one plus nine you end up with ten that's the alpha going back to the beginning right so it doesn't matter how you how you flip the number once you understand why it represent what it represent you still gonna see what it say mm -hmm. right numerically zero is first nine is last mm -hmm. right we talking about what they call uh uh a decimal system, a 10-point numeral system. Zero is first because it's a placeholder for nothing. That means wherever zero at, don't nothing go there. From there, you go, you end up at one when you get the first one. So numerically, you're counting from one to nine. But we didn't count from one to nine. We counted from nine to one. 
because we read from right to left, not left to right. Mm. Right. So when they flipped us left to right, I mean, right to left from left to right, they flipped the one in front of the nine instead of the nine in front of the one. Right. But the 91 is the year of um, the first attack on the World Trade Center. <clears throat> Remember, blow up like the World Trade. Mm -hmm. Right. So it also tells the secrets of what's happening at the end. Right. So it all become relative. That's why you come with 9-11. 9-11 can be scrambled into a 1-9-1 anagram. One being on both sides of the nine represents the beginning meets the end through destruction. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what they was giving us. They had to give us three knocks in five year increments, roughly, to let us know they was coming to take over the world. And then we got to stop them. Mm -hmm. So George Bush had his Arab connections. We know he was connected to the bin Ladens because they helped all of the bin Laden family leave America directly on the same day as 9-11, and they was the only planes allowed to leave. Mm -hmm. So they had to be protected by the Bush family. <clears throat> right? So we know that the one of the bin Ladens died leaving the Bush farm in Texas. This is recorded. Right? So that show proves also the Arab connection to the bin Laden family. Right. And the bin Laden family is the construction or the Masonic family of um, the Middle East because they was getting all of the royal contracts to build the palaces. Mm -hmm. Right. They didn't start building palaces in the Middle East until 1933 when they discovered that it was massive amounts of oil in Saudi. Mm -hmm. Right. Nation of Islam started in 1933. Mm -hmm. Right. So now we're talking about. One nine three three, and the three and the three is six, right? So that's the other end of the one nine one on the turnaround, mm. right? So it all becomes relative depending on the angle you look at the problem. Most people look at the surface of the problem and never look at the intricacies and the workings of the problem in order to establish a solution. Mm -hmm. The only solution is for us is to stand up in our individual capacity, demand the chiefs come tell us where these imposters at on the land and have y'all got them out yet. That's what we need to know. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the next question. Um, when and how will the Caucasians, Caucasians leave this planet to get balance? The Caucasians is not the problem. The problem is the ones that look like us that ain't us, that ain't from here. They the problem. They know who they is and they know they leaving. They tell you all the time they ain't staying here. When you listen to their lives and they talking about leaving here, that's because they was part of the problem and that's why they can't stay. It was all skin colors of people in the families of the earth tribes. All hair textures. So that ain't nothing new to us. What's new to us is to use those physical descriptions as tools of division. That's new to us. That answer? Yeah, pardon my mic. Uh, Sometimes I get a little short in this mic. Uh, <laughs> let's get to the next question. You know, somebody asked, I don't see the question now, and this is one of the questions I want to ask you earlier, so let me just ask this now because I see somebody remind me of it. Uh, your thoughts on the Blue Star Kachina? Talk to me because I seen you posted that in your Instagram. What's the, what, what's the science on that? What's going on with the Blue Star Kachina? Well, there's an ancient Hopi prophecy about the Red Star Kachina and the Blue Star Kachina um, returning at the close of the age to usher in the new world for the rainbow children and the children of the stars. Mm -hmm. So the, the they are just symbols to match the stellar clock, what's going on in time. Mm -hmm. They also made Kachina dolls that tell the story of what takes place um, at that time. So this say two stars rise up, a red one and a blue one. And these are the Kachinas. All right, all right.
right, let's get to the uh, next question. We're going to take about three more questions, then we're going to get, get out of here, family. I want to appreciate everybody for tuning in. We got about 1,800 people in here. I'm with Brother Rod Hayes, and he's dropping jewels. It's been a magnificent broadcast. Let's see. Uh, where will we stand? <clears throat> uh, someone asked, what's the difference between a shaman and a hayoka? I don't, I don't uh, yeah. Okay, so a Hayoka is a uh, extreme empath, and he normally uh, a shaman interact more with the community than the Hayoka. When you see the movies and they go out into the wilderness to meet an old man that lives in, in the house by itself in the middle of nowhere, he would be a Hayoka, but he can also be a shaman, right? And but when you're in the village and you had a medicine man of the village, he is the shaman of the village. When he gets stuck on the problem, he go to the Hayoka for assistance in the problem. In the uh, Christian religion, they will be called Melchizedek priests. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh... Rod mentioned the stock market fall. What role does cryptocurrency play in the plan, if any? Is cryptocurrency good or bad for us? Right now, with until this old system is done with, I do not advocate for any kind of currency um, because I don't. It's hard to see the ones that's for us and the one that they cre trying to create to undermine us to stay in power. So I don't put a stamp of approval on any of their currencies until we can see it on the outcome, what they are. I don't trust none of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the connection between humans and water? It's the same connection as a mother to a child. The water is a symbol for spirit. The human brain is over 70% water. The human body is over like 70% water. So the connection is an indispensable connection between humans and water. Water is also the natural antifreeze of the body. That's why even in cold climates, you got to stay hydrated to stay warm. Right? But in this hot climates, you got to stay hydrated so that you can stay cool. And the perspiration is the water being flushed through the system. Right. And the water flushes the toxins out of the system. So water is very critical to the survival of the human as a creature. Indeed. Uh, Alchemy Goddess wants to know what is a diamond, baby? I haven't been able to, I haven't been able to find a lot of information on that. So study under crystal child and look for a blue crystal child would be synonymous with what they would call a diamond baby. They're just coming from the frequency of which one of the star seeds or uh, indigos they are, right? So you hear them say the ruby child, sapphire. They talking about the colors on the rainbow that they energy represent, right? And one of the colors on the rainbow is a pale blue, which is the color of the diamond, represented as the color of the diamond in um, ancient writing, which is also the color of several other stones but the diamond being the preeminent stone um clear stone holds the position and the highest position of that color right so mm -hmm. this is what the so when you're looking for information on the diamond baby you look for the information under the indigo child and you look under the blue indigo and you will match the energy up we're gonna take one more question my brother is that cool Mm -hmm. All right. uh, is symbolism more important than speech? It depends on the um, learning style of an individual. Because some people learn auditory and some learn visual. A person that learns visual symbolism can be more important than speech. But a person that learns an audio, the speech will be able to explain the symbol and help them to understand it even better. Right. So they become based on your learning style more so than uh, a blanket. Yes or no. 
Okay, okay. I think that's about it, family. I think that's the last question we're going to take. Oh, man. Let me fix my hat. Such a a great show, my brother. I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting back. I'm just enjoying myself. I'm listening. Wow, man. I'm, I'm, I mean, I look forward to you being a regular on here, my brother. I look forward to you. I told you whatever you need me, man. I appreciate you helping us get the word out so we can get our people to understand we ain't come on no ships. Mm -hmm. We not black. Mm -hmm. We ain't white. Mm -hmm. We not a crayon. Mm -hmm. Right? We mm -hmm. organic to the land. We mm -hmm. was already here before anybody named Christopher Columbus came snooping around to see how to mm -hmm. take over our people. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. If we return back to our original oral tradition, we can chant down Babylon. Mm -hmm. And the battle cries free Larry Hoover for all those that understand the concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as you ain't saying that, either you don't understand or you're not part of us. Because you got some people that is from Africa over here that blended in with us that's not our enemy. But they ain't our allies either because they want to carry on the narrative that the slave master gave us that we came from Africa. So I just asked them to just stay out of the way till we done cleaning this shit up. And then they'll know that we ain't had no hard feelings against them because they got invaded and colonized just like us. Mm -hmm. we just realized that they ain't us and we ain't them mm -hmm. and it's not personal it's just family business and the family business right now is to restore the matriarchy demand the three kings and protect the children that's family business it's not personal and anybody that can't vibe with that ain't part of the family because mm -hmm. those are the, the the main sticking points or glue points that bind us all together. Mama, the babies, and the future. Mama, the babies, and the future. Yes, sir. Right? Because in, in our community, we don't talk back to our mama, not because we don't know how. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's just not our tradition and our customs. Nah, stop. And when, right. we, and when we see little Bobby and them do that shit, we be, be shocked. like, what the fuck? We be like, what they doing? Right. That's yeah, not we... our culture. Yeah. But it's their culture. Right, that same child would turn up, grow up, and will bust your ass about talking reckless to his mama, but he talked reckless to her all his childhood. Mm -hmm. Man, but right. when he become an adult, he don't talk reckless to her no more. Mm -hmm. Only by being around him would you ever see that part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The way that they rear children is not the same as how we rear children. Mm -hmm. We rear our children to survive the most hostile of life conditions. Mm -hmm. It's called oppression, subjugation, mm -hmm. infiltrated and subverted. Mm -hmm. Right? We got to get out of it mm -hmm. so that we can get our children out of it. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is where we figure out the, the banana in the tailpipe is every divisive tool they could find. Mm -hmm. Right, because at one time all of the nations of the earth spoke one language until somebody named Yahweh divided up the languages. Mm, Yahweh. And they say that the devil's uh uh means of control is divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. So if Yahweh divided up the language to divide up the people to stop them from coming to heaven, who the hell is he really? Mm -hmm. And Yahweh in the Sumerian tablets is called Enlil, mm -hmm. Lord of the sky. Lord of the booming voice, right? And he's the one that say he's a jealous guy. Well, we don't deal in jealousy because that's a contagious, toxic behavior that's passed on and taught. It's not natural to us. Mm -hmm. When you see us behaving out of jealousy is because we're trying to act like our oppressors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not part of our culture. I don't care if you got more than me as long as you respect me like I respect you. I don't care if you got less than me, as long as you respect me like I respect you. Mm -hmm. So while we was worrying about respecting each other, they was worrying about getting more than we got. Mm -hmm. But when they found out they can't have what we got because we not buying it, now they fighting for their life. Mm -hmm. Literally. On earth, because they won't be here. I don't know where they're going, but they can't stay here. Why they right? can't stay here? No, they can't stay here. They didn't cause too many problems already. 
Mm-hmm. So wherever they go, they just can't stay here. <clears throat> and they'll tell you they leave it. They know they leave and they feel it in their soul. The mm-hmm. same way the ones of us that's from organic to the land know we ain't going nowhere. Mm. We not worried about your hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, because wherever they affect is where the dirt going down. And if some of us got to get caught up in the cleanup, oh, well, mama had to do it that way because mm. she had to get the cancer out. Mm. Right. That's how we look at it. They look at it like, oh, no, we got to stop the tornado with a bomb. True. Mm. Because you know they do have a bomb designed to stop tornadoes. I've heard about it. Right. We ain't paying attention because it's it's tornadoes in November. Hmm. Way past tornado season, hmm. you got tornadoes and they marching in mass together in a three man formation. That's Mother Nature demanding that we see the three kings walking on the land because she needs to fill the big mama seat to bring the balance back to earth. Hmm. <laughs> so. Once the big mama seat get filled and all of the matriarchs get their post Mm -hmm. across the land, Mm -hmm. right? In the meantime, you got the chiefs have to open the way. That's our job. And all of the chiefs, not men. It's probably more female chiefs on the land than it is males. Mm -hmm. An example, uh, uh, if you could pull her up, Chief Warhorse is her name. Let me see. <clears throat> she a real chief with the real blood tied to the land that know our history. Right? She come from a long family of chiefs. And all of them wasn't men and all of them wasn't women. Okay, I think I got it. Let me uh, share this. I think I got it. Um, give me a second family. This her right here? That's her. Okay. So who's this now? Please explain now that we got That's a picture. Chief, her name is Chief Warhorse. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, you can pull her up on YouTube explaining what happened to her people in the Trail of Tears and how they got separated from them $5 Indians that they used the Trail of Tears to switch us out. Mm-hmm. You ain't know that, did you? No, I've heard about that. Yeah, I just did a show recently about dealing with that. Yeah. yeah. So during the Trail of Tears is where they switched us out. The problem is, is in order for the five dollar Indians to learn our culture, they had to put an elder uh, woman with them, one of the elder priestesses, to teach them the traditions and the customs. Mm. So now they know all our shit, and now they got to give it back. Mm. It ain't personal. It's just family business. Big Mama told him that when my babies come, y'all give it back. Mm. They agreed. Right? All of the treaties was made with $5 Indians. It wasn't made with us. Mm. There is no um, record of a treaty with Choctaw. There is no record of Seminole treaties. There is no record of Hopi treaties. Mm-hmm. All of the treaties is the clans that was the biggest clans, the easiest to usurp, because it was so many of us of so many differing uh, looks. Mm-hmm. That's why they call it the Great Melding Pot when they got here, because mm-hmm. we had all skin colors and we all live peaceful. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden, here come these motherfuckers, and then now we don't live peaceful no more, mm-hmm. and we oppress, and we don't have access to Big Mama's money. Mm-hmm. Right, so this is where we at. Mm-hmm. So the the unity in the community is the key to freedom. The battle cry is free Larry Hoover. With that comes all of the other chiefs in the land that's held behind bars, political prisoners we call them. <laughs> right, all of the ones whose land they usurp, they have to give it back now. Mm-hmm. Because it's tribal land and under the um, Indigenous Rights Act of 2017, they agreed. They already said they was going to give it back. And also, Washington and D.C. is closed. It's been closed for two years. 
Ask the people in D.C. what's going on. Don't believe me. Check it out. As Malachi York would say. Mm. Don't believe me. Check it out. D.C. closed. Joe Biden is a skit. It's a comedy show played in the public pantomime. Right? Almost all of this shit we're seeing on TV right now is pushing a narrative that does not exist. All to distract us from the Free Larry Hoover movement of the indigenous people of the land and restore the tribes back to their prominence. Right? So that's where we at as a people, and this is what we have to do. The easiest way to get us free is for us all to say the same thing at the same time in agreement. The more of us do it, the faster it happens. Mm. Most of us aren't educated to the matter. So then you share the information, you study the information and check it out, validate it for yourself. And then you explain it because you can only explain it from your level of understanding. Mm. My level just happened to be a little different because I had a lot more study time. Mm. Hey, brother, brother Rod Hayes, I want to thank you for coming on the show. You lit it up. <laughs> you lit it I up tonight. You having me, man. Yeah, man, you lit it up tonight. Wow. I mean, the people are thoroughly uh, appreciative for what you brought to the table tonight, my brother. Uh, it was a sister I seen on here a couple days ago mm. talking about Big Mama. Sister Myra. That's Sister Myra. Right. Send her a shout out for me. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would tell her. I would tell her. <laughs> what you doing about that show? You liked it? Oh yeah, she's talking about Big Mama. I, I know what she's talking about. We, yeah. we speak the same language. Same I understand language. what she's telling me. I'm gonna continue that narrative for forever and from now on. Big Mama. I'm gonna continue that that Big Mama cosmic energy. This is my job uh, to continue to, to to carry on that narrative of Big Mama. So yeah, anybody talking about Big Mama, you know, they 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 welcome to my show as long as it comes from a pure intent. So mm -hmm. I want to thank you. I want to thank Sister Myra. Uh, any contact information you want to leave the people with before you get out of here, my brother? The, the, easiest, yeah. the easiest way to find me right now is on Instagram. I got two pages. One I post, Rod Hayes. Mm -hmm. And they won't let me do lives on that one, so I have to do my lives on Morpheus Megas, which is pinned to the top of the Rod Hayes page. Okay. Yeah, so it's rod.hayes.75. Rod.hayes.75. Yeah. On Instagram. Yep. Okay, cool. You heard that. Rod.Hayes.75 on Instagram. I know a lot of y'all going to look for the brother. The brother got awesome information on Instagram. Uh, I look forward to, you know, having you on probably once a month, my brother. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to holler at you again next month. You know what I'm saying? Get an update. This is Brother Rich, Brother Rod Hayes, Family Black Magic 363. Make sure you hit the like button, even if it's the end of the show. Just hit the like button before you, before you leave the show. But thank you for tuning in, family. I appreciate all the love and support. We out of here, family. Peace. Peace.